This is an exercise on solving ordinary differential equations. In this case, we're going to use a COVID-19 simulation, population dynamics in terms of susceptible, infective, exposed, and recovered individuals. And these are going to make up compartments that are going to go from one to the other in terms of the fraction of the population. In the end, we're going to look at things like social distancing measures and how those affect the infection rates and the peak infection rate. Let's say there's certain hospital capacity that we want to try to stay under. So we might be studying these population models, much like epidemiologists do when they study the spread of disease. However, this model that we're going to be talking about today with differential equations is going to be a very simplified model. Epidemiologists have much more complex models and uh, ability to try to predict what's going on. But we're just going to solve these four differential equations right here. We have the susceptible population, the exposed population, the infective, and the recovered. Okay, so just those four differential equations. So we're going to do this in Python. I'm going to just walk through how to set up this simulation in Python so that we can um, go through this uh, and do these what-if scenarios to try to determine what is going to be the future of the outbreak for COVID-19. All right, so first of all, I'm going to use NumPy ODint from the SciPy Integrate package and then matplotlib. Now I can put a social distancing parameter, that's the u value here, between 0 and 1. So if we have a value of 1 here for u, that means that this is going to be 0. And that means that the change in susceptibles is, isn't going to change because we're not infecting anybody because there's no contact. So this term right here, you'll see it down below as well, right here. This is the rate at which people are being exposed to the virus. And then once they're exposed, they can become infective. And so there's an alpha parameter that determines how it goes from an incubation period to an infective period. And then finally, this is the recovery rate and they become, uh, they are recovered at that point. Okay, so this is a differential equation. There are rates on the right-hand side, and then the differential term is on the left-hand side. But the main driver here is the social distancing parameter between zero and one. All right, so no social distancing. I'm just gonna make up some numbers here, 0 0.1 for mass. And, you know, studying a campus um, like Brigham Young University, maybe mass and hybrid classes are 0.2. Mass hybrid classes with some online classes might be 0.3. Time to incubation uh, of the virus, maybe an average of 5.1 days. Now, this could be different uh, for each, uh, for different individuals, but that might be an average. Infective time might be 3.3. And then R0, you've heard a lot about this parameter. This is, you know, one person is going to spread it to 2.4 others. It's kind of the, the um, how infective the virus is. Okay, we have 33, uh, about 33 and a half thousand students on campus. And we're just going to start with a single individual that's infected. All right, we have infectives. Uh, those are zero recovered or zero, and then susceptibles, it's going to be one minus that. So now we're going to be dealing with fractions of the population. So one would be all of them, and one over n is going to be one of them. All right, I'm going to have my initial conditions, S-E-I-R. These are the SEER compartmental models. Okay, so it stands for susceptible, exposed, infective, and recovered. And then I'm going to calculate an alpha value. Okay, this is how they go from uh, exposed to infective. And then gamma is going to be how they go from infective to recovered. Okay, so actually infective, and that's how, T infective is how long they're going to be infected. 
infective to others. And then beta as well, this is the uh, uh, R0 value times uh, gamma that we're going to use for the, the beta value in terms of susceptible to exposed. All right, now we're going to define a new COVID function. Now I'm going to put in x and t for my time. This is going to be a dynamic model, so it's going to vary with time. And I'm just going to break that out into four individual variables. x is going to be a vector of length 4, and I'm just going to split that out with one line. Now I'm going to create a dx. These are my derivative values, and so I need all of these all of the derivatives, I'm going to return that from the model. Okay, so I'm going to do that uh, later. I'm going to define these derivatives later. Uh, let's go on with the rest of this. I want to explain the rest of it, and then the challenge for you is going to be to put in the right-hand side of those differential equations and then solve it. So I've given you, I'll give you the start of this everything except those equations and also you'll need to change the u value to different social distancing measures to see the effect on the outcome all right i'm going to define my time this is going to be linearly spaced values between zero and 200 days and i'll simulate it every two days so 101 time points now i'm going to call the ode int function this is actually going to solve the COVID model, and it's going to start with x naught, and you can see that's the S E I R initial values, and then I'm going to put in the time, and it's going to solve it and return it as x. Now I need to split that out into different vectors. Now the first column is going to be S, and then E I and R. All right, now I'm going to plot it, and I'll just put in those uh, subplots to come up with um, and show it in the end. Okay, let's go back up top here to the COVID model. I'm gonna put in minus one minus u times beta times s times i. Okay, so if you have more susceptibles, that rate is gonna be higher. If you have more infectives, that rate is gonna be higher. If beta value is larger, it's gonna be higher. Okay, and then I'm gonna put that same term here but just with a positive sign, and then minus alpha times the exposed. Okay, then we have alpha times E minus gamma times I, and then gamma times I. Okay, so there it is for the model. Let's go ahead and run this now and just look at the solution. Okay, so it's going to integrate it, and this is social distancing. I just called that 10%. It's arbitrary, but it just shows you, you know, how this could potentially change. If I put in something like 0.3, okay, and let's go for 200 days, about two-thirds of a year, you can see that it stretches it out further, and you can also see a lower level of... Um, people that got infected and then are recovered. So this is like the herd immunity state right here. Okay, and you could dial that up further with more um, social distancing measures. This plot right here just shows how they compare as you increase uh, those values. You can see it pulls it off to the side. All right, so that's the first model. I'm gonna go ahead and close this, and we're also gonna solve it um, another way and part of the reason we're going to do that is because we not only want to um, you know determine what is going to happen with a single social distancing parameter but let's say we could somehow enact some type of social distancing optimal profile so let people interact more in this region and then increase social distancing at a certain point to drive down the infection rate. Maybe just keep it at a certain constraint, like maybe a fraction of the infectives are going to need hospital uh, services. And so you want to keep the number of infectives below a certain rate or a certain uh, quantity. So uh, could we somehow optimize the social distancing to keep 
every keep the population below the capacity of the healthcare system. All right, and keep things open as much as possible or delay the peak until a vaccine is available. All right, so let's we're going to use a different package for that. It's also in um, this one is going to be in Python, but it's going to be with the Gecko package. Okay, so here it's very similar to the one that we just reviewed. In this case, you just define uh, U as a Gecko FV. It's called a uh, fixed value, but then we're going to optimize it later. Okay, it has the same parameters here, the same initial conditions. Um, and then I'm just going to define some equations right here. So here I have S and then DT, and I'll put the double equal sign and equals um, one minus u times beta times s times i. Okay, so there's my first equation right here. I'm just gonna create another equation. The differential equals, okay, same thing, but I have minus alpha times e. And I have i dt with the parentheses there. And then, uh, okay, the rest of these, just like we reviewed before. Okay, so there are my equations in Gecko, my differential equations. Now I also put in here the times. Uh, I put in a couple extra right here. I inserted a couple smaller steps because right at the very beginning, believe it or not, um, the, some interesting dynamics occur. And so you've got to have very small time values here to track that well. Okay, so I'm going to simulate it. And this is the simulation. Um, I have I mode seven. That's a that's a uh, sequential simulation, and then I solve it. Okay, so that's going to be the very first part, and then I plot it just like I did in uh, the other one, and then I'll show the plot. Okay, but now what I'm going to do is do something just a little bit different. Now I'm going to optimize the value of u. Okay, so I'm going to change it just a little bit. All right. Um, same thing as before. I have my initial conditions, my alpha, gamma, and beta. I have my gecko model, but now I'm going to just put a upper and lower bound to that. Okay, lower bound of zero, upper bound of 0.8 on the social distancing. I'm going to let it come up with the optimal profile to adjust the social distancing to maintain within healthcare constraints. All right, I have my initial values, and here are my equations that I talked about before. And then I have my time, and I'll insert my additional values. Okay, so there's my m dot time, and now I'm going to simulate it like I just did. All right, so I'm going to simulate it first, plot it. Now I'm going to go to the optimization. All right, I'm going to switch to a dynamic optimization mode, which is I mode 6. I'm going to set an upper value of 0 0.02. So the effectives, I don't want those to go above 2% of the population in order to maintain uh, capacity in the healthcare system. All right, then I'm going to turn the U status on, meaning that the optimizer can adjust it to achieve that constraint. And then I also have, um, I need to grab the values from the simulation. And so I do that here. And then I also want to minimize you. So I want to minimize the social distancing measures because those cause economic damage, they cause disruption. Uh, so I want to try to minimize that while still maintaining under this infective uh, fraction of the population. Okay, so there's our optimization problem. All right, and then I'll solve it and then plot the optimized values and show the plot. Okay, so let's just go ahead and see how this one worked out. All right, so it's going to first simulate it. All right, so here it is. Uh, right here, it looks like I had some warnings. Uh, okay, so they're just like like plotting warnings there. Okay, so this is what would happen uh, if you did nothing. 
and then the infective you want to keep that below a certain fraction of the population now originally I had started with a hundred thousand there and so less than two thousand infective in that population okay and so you can see it does that but what it does is it increases okay the social distancing um, and then it drops it okay and you can see here no more social distancing is required so it said that the optimal solution was to have very strict social distancing for just a few days and then start off with 0.5 and then taper down to you know about 0.2 or 0.15 and then drop it all the way and so with that it said in this ideal scenario if you could somehow communicate that uh, to people that this is how we need to do social distancing or if you could even measure social distancing then this would be the optimal solution if population infective rates were governed by those four equations which we know they aren't it's an oversimplification but it just shows the ability to apply differential equations and optimization to achieve some kind of desired outcome now we could theoretically take a more complex model one that's more accurate and use this same approach to say what is the outcome that we want to achieve and I'm gonna let you decide on the variables that can be adjusted until you come up with the optimal solution okay so that's what we've done here with these differential equations as well if you'd like to get the source code for all of these it's available I have two places where I've put these first one is on the process dynamics and control website and if you just come to schedule okay so over here on the right schedule and you can see simulating this one is going to be the COVID-19 all right and you can see the starting script where you can plug in your differential equations here on the right or if you just want to go straight down to the solution you can see it with odint solution and with the uh, gecko python solution and then if you want to look at the op the optimization solution then uh, come over to um, this one is going to be uh, okay the machine learning and dynamic optimization course right here and if you come down to applications there's COVID-19 and it shows the same model but applied in optimization so there's a solution there if you'd like to get that